Hello, I'm Megan O'Neill, the Technical Marketing Manager for Simulink Test here at the MathWorks. In this presentation, we will discuss simulation testing in model-based design. I will provide an overview of Simulink Test, the new MathWorks product which provides capabilities to develop, manage, and execute simulation-based tests of Simulink models and generated code. Let's review the key points that I would like you to take away from this presentation. First, using Simulink Test, you can isolate and test components in a synchronized test environment using the new test harnesses. Second, Simulink Tests enables you to create reusable test assets such as the temporal and logic-based assessments, as well as test cases. Finally, you can manage simulation tests to confirm the behavior of Simulink models and generated code. Now, to explore these concepts, we will use a model of a cruise controller for an automobile. Let's begin with an example email that a component designer may receive from their test engineer. In this email, the test engineer writes, Hello, Megan. I discovered an overflow error while testing the cruise control model that appears to originate in your component. I created and included a test harness for the target speed throttle component. It contains the inputs that recreate the error. Please investigate and let me know if you can resolve this. Okay, so let's take a look at the model. The test engineer indicated he used Simulink test to create a test harness to isolate the component error. We can see a badge in the lower right corner of the component mentioned, and by clicking on the badge, we see two harnesses are included in this model. Now let's open the test harness that came from the test engineer. In this test harness, we see the component under test is the target speed throttle block. The test engineer has used a signal builder block with inputs he mentioned would recreate the error. So let's first begin by simulating the harness to recreate the error. So I'll hit run. So here we can see the overflow error that the email mentioned. We can click on the hyperlink to be directed to the issue. Okay, so I know my component model well, so I recognize that the input here is unconstrained and that's leading to the error. I believe I can fix this issue by adding a saturation block. So now let me define some reasonable upper and lower bounds. Okay, and I'll add this block now to the model. Now, here in the test harness, let's simulate to confirm that this resolves the error. Great. Okay, so we can see the simulation ran without errors, and I can view the simulation outputs here in the scope blocks. So this confirms that the saturation block seems to have resolved the overflow error. We are in the test harness now, remember, and so we are drilled into the component under test. If we walk up one level at a time, we can see that we were starting in the PI controller, and then here we are in the activated block, and finally one more level up, we're back up at the top level in the test harness. Now, Simulink Test allows you to control the synchronization between the test harness and the main model. In this example, synchronization is occurring between the component under test in the test harness and in the main model. So by adding the saturation block in the test harness, this change was also made to the main model. And let's confirm that behavior by closing out the test harness. Back in the main model, here let's drill into first the target speed throttle block next to the activated block, and finally into the PI controller. And yes, here you can see the saturation block appears. 
so by enabling synchronization between the test harness and the main model, we don't have to duplicate the fix in multiple places. Now that we saw how a Simulink test can be used to isolate and resolve errors, let's move on to the next example. After modifying my design, I would like to reconfirm that my model is still behaving as expected. To do this, I'm going to review the model behavior given our expected use case scenarios. At the lower right hand corner, I can see that there are test harnesses created. So let's review one. Here the whole block diagram is now the system under test in the test harness. In this harness, we can see two test sequence blocks. This block is available when you have Simulink test, and it can be used to author both input vectors and assessments as shown here. Let's open the test sequence block labeled Test Stimulus. Here in the test sequence editor, we find a sequence of steps along with the transitions between steps defined. In the first step, each signal output is given an initial value. After 15 seconds, the step name Enable Cruise begins. In this step, the enabled signal is defined as true for 0.5 seconds using ET, which stands for elapsed time, which is defined as the time from the start of this particular step. After 5 seconds, the step name Set Cruise begins. Here the set signal becomes true for 0.5 seconds. Now here the transition is a combination of a temporal and logic statement. When the set button is not pressed or false and the 0.5 seconds has passed, the increment speed step then begins. In this way you can author input vectors based on temporal and logical conditions rather than on time series data. Now I'll close the editor so we can review the assessments. Here in this test sequence block we can see a hierarchy has been defined. By right clicking I can see an option when decomposition is checked. And this is also indicated by this switch symbol. With this option selected we see the names of the child steps are followed by a when statement indicating when they are evaluated. For example, here we see the enabled child step is evaluated when the enable condition function is true. Now to view an error, let's write an example. Assert and false, so this will ensure the error is thrown. And I will define an error message that I want to appear. If I hit run, you will see this assert statement will stop the simulation and display the defined message. Okay, so now that we understand how that will work, I will remove that example assert. And let's close the block and navigate back to the first test sequence block. I want to be able to view the test sequence animation, so let's confirm that the animation speed is set to slow. Okay, and it is. So now if I simulate, we can see the test sequence block animation, which can be useful for debugging if needed. Okay, the test completed with no errors. So let's close out this harness. Now at the main model, we also see that we have an additional test harness. Here we can see a signal builder block has been used to create the inputs for a number of additional scenarios. Now let's see how we can systematically execute and manage our simulation tests using the Simulink Test Manager. To open the Test Manager, we will go to the Analysis menu and Test Manager. I want to confirm my updated model now still passes my simulation tests. So I will open my test file. Here you can see I have tests created for both the system level as well as tests for one of the blocks named Target Speed Throttle. If I expand the component level test suite, I see here the test case 
the test engineer created along with the test harness to isolate and test the overflow error. Here we'll see that the test was created using a simulation test template. And when executed, it will simulate the test harness created for the overflow error. In the input section, I can see the test is using the signal builder group the test engineer provided to help recreate the error. Now let's look at the system level tests. First, here we see the simulation test that runs the harness we reviewed with the test sequence blocks. In this example, the input section is not populated because the inputs are generated in the harness by the test sequence block. Now, I also have a test suite labeled regression tests. Here we find a number of test cases, so let's look at the first one. This has the harness with the signal builder block that defined multiple functional tests. I can see the input is selected to one of the signal builder groups. Now this test case is a baseline test, so an expected output is defined in the baseline criteria section. When executed, these baseline tests will compare the simulation output of the model to the expected outputs defined. Now, it's important to maintain the traceability of the test to the requirements, and I can do that here. By clicking on the hyperlink, I can follow the link to my requirements. Now, let's go back to the test manager tree. Here, I can execute the test individually or in batch. Let's execute this whole test file. Now, we can see that 15 tests are being executed. We can watch the high-level pass and fail being indicated as the tests are executing. Now here we can see that 14 tests passed and one failed. If we drill in, we can see the test that failed. We can see even the individual signals that failed and review the comparison between the simulation output and the expected output for each log signal. Now if we want, we could add a tolerance. Here we can see that an absolute tolerance of 5 would change the signal to be passing given the new tolerance criteria. Now the test as a whole you can see is still marked as failing as the other signals are still marked as fail. Now let's return back to our test file. We've been testing our model, but now let's investigate the generated code. To test that the behavior of the generated code matches the model, let's create a SIL test, or software in the loop. One way to do this is by creating an equivalence test. Now let's name the test and then go back to our main model. Here at the component level, you can see that I have already created one harness for our SIL test. This harness includes the model in normal mode. I will also need a second harness for the SIL mode test. So to do this, let's create a new harness by right-clicking and selecting Create Test Harness. I will name this block the SIL mode harness. and select a configuration of verification and select the SIL mode. Now that I have my two harnesses, I can finish authoring my test in the manager. For the first simulation, I will select the model and the normal mode harness. I will also select my input file and let's map those inputs. 
Now the first simulation is defined. The second simulation will be very similar to the first, so I can click on the copy settings from simulation 1. Now in the second simulation, I only need to change the harness to the sill mode harness. Now I can execute the sill test. Here I can see that the test passed. So this indicates that the behavior of the generated code matches the simulation output of the model in normal mode. Finally, to wrap up my example, I'd like to document my results in a report. So I can right click on the results of interest and choose create a report. Now let's create a report for the failed regression test. I can select the file format as PDF and click create. In the report, I can see a summary of the 15 tests included, and I can see the details of the test that failed. After reviewing, I may decide to update the expected outputs before I return this updated model and test file to the test engineer. Now let's recap the key points that I would like you to take away from these examples. First, Using Simulink tests, you can isolate and test components in a synchronized test environment using the new test harnesses. Second, Simulink tests enables you to create reusable test assets, and these may include temporal and logic-based assessments and test cases. Finally, you can manage simulation tests to confirm the behavior of Simulink models and generated code. This concludes the presentation portion of this webinar on Simulink Test. You can find more information about Simulink Test on the product page, and that includes more details on the product as well as contact information. Thank you.